Hey, welcome back, y'all. Going to do a from beginning to end uh, video here that uh, we're not going to make too long, but we have uh, shown you the Queen of Hearts sign that is uh, generating a lot of interest. So we are cutting the King of Hearts today, and we will show you exactly what we do from beginning to end. Uh, you know, because a few of you have uh, asked us to show a little bit uh, more in regards to what we do. So, here we go. So, the very first thing that we do when we cut a sign that uh, is going to consume as much material as uh, we're going to end up using is we always put in new consumables. A lot of individuals don't do this, and... Uh, I found that if we don't do it, it shows in the quality of work. And yeah, it gets a little bit expensive, but you know, you're know, you talking about uh, signs that cost over $100 after they're all done, which you'll understand why after you see everything that we put into this sign. So here's the very first step of creating a file. And uh, this is a program that we call ViaCAD. And what it does is it allows us to make changes on the design, uh, widen it, lengthen it, uh, create add-ons and so forth. End up taking this file and we put it into what's called sheet cam. This is where we pretty much make sure everything's all squared up. We set the different inner and outer layers, direction of cuts, and we always want to cut the inside of the product first and then the outside last. If you do it reverse and what happens is if you cut the outside then it could shift while it's doing all the cutting on the inside and affect the, the quality of the cut. This is the finish point of uh, sheet cam where we have uh, directed the plasma to make all the cuts accordingly and I just threw this in there just to show you the how many cuts there actually is on a project like this. So let me show you the next step that we take. Next, we put our file from Sheet Cam into a program that uh, we use. Different plasma cutters use different programs. We use what's called Mach 3. And this is what you see here, and it shows us the cut patterns and uh, tells us, you know, exactly the settings, what we have down into status, onto the next. You always gotta make sure that you clean your material really well. You know, all of these uh, little things that you do preliminary makes your cut turn out. And nobody likes to waste material. Okay, we're just about ready to cut. We have our material weighted down. And away we go. plate out which is going to be identical to the size of the uh, king plate all right so 
approximately a 16 by 23 back plate, 24 gauge. This, uh, this is probably a minute cut, if that. Let's do it. Okay, while Julie's finishing up the cleanup over on the king layer, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the back plate. Let me show you. It's pretty much that quick and that easy. The top of the crown there, there is uh, a place that Julie's gonna hit with the grinder. It has a little protrusion on it. Uh, you know, we do not really like the backsides of our signs having any rough edges, so she's gonna hit that. But the next thing that I'll do is I'll just take uh, mineral spirits, wipe the whole thing down. Now the whole secret to mineral spirits is, is you really don't wanna leave the product on there. So you have to bake it off. So we actually put it in our oven, uh, bring it up to temperature and uh, cook the chemical out of it. That way it doesn't affect the powder coating. Okay, we got everything uh, cut and we are now getting ready to powder it, but I wanted to show you the raw image. Pretty cool, huh? I wouldn't be surprised if somebody says, hey Scott, why don't you just clear coat that bad boy and we'll take it. But uh, as you can see here, we've got uh, the back plate on. So this has taken us uh, with cleanup to this point right here, two hours. So as you guys can see, you know, nobody really makes a uh, a fortune doing this but this is more fun as a hobby for Julie and I and uh, you know we get a kick out of making them so anyhow let's take a look at how we powder coat them and again these are going to be uh, candy colored we chrome the back plate first and then while it is still a, a little warm we then coat it with uh, the red, and we will show you what we do. Okay, so this is the, uh, the chrome that we're doing uh, for the first stage of the candy, and uh, it's a new process for us, and uh, I think we got it down pretty good. Let's show you. See, it doesn't look like chrome. Let's watch what happens. So there you go, guys. Check this out. Beautiful chrome. Okay, you can end up having uh, signs done in chrome, which we have uh, different products made of chrome and so forth. But this turns out really beautiful. This is not a cured, uh, completely cured powder. When you do a two-stage, you have to actually uh, bring it to the, uh, what they call, to the flow. 
as you can see, it turns out really, really nice. This was only about uh, six minutes, and on to the next. So here's a perfect example of uh, a piece that we were testing the chrome out on, and this is called Fire Horse. This turned out really, really nice goes to show that no matter what design we have, you want it in chrome, get her done.